Now to a special event you may not have heard of. The World Plogging Championships could certainly look to position itself as new Olympic event at a particularly environmentally conscious game. Plogging is collecting rubbish while you jog. It's a growing initiative across the world. This year's event in Italy next month, like most years, has one British representative, North Londoner Luke Douglas Home. He's an environmentalist, also known as the coastline runner, always looking to raise awareness of the constant flow of waste that washes up on our shores. Luke joined James to explain all you need to know about the bizarre event. For those who don't know, we're going to start with just asking the basic question, what is plogging? Plogging. Plogging is, uh, I've, got, I've got a new word, I'm, I've developed a new word called absurious. Okay. And absurious is, here we go, this is hot off the press, hot off my brain to you, James. Yeah. Absurious is absurd yet serious. Mm. Absurious. And plogging is kind of absurious, it's mm. running and picking up litter. Mm. Well, tell us a little bit about why you got into it then, a uh, passionate environmentalist, I'm sure, um, and why the World Plogging Championships coming up are so important to you and to get involved in it and what it kind of means, I suppose, why the event was created at all. Sure. Um, I am common, more commonly known as the coastline runner. Mm. I run the coasts of this country collecting plastic pollution and uh, other pollution and engaging with schools and with councils to reduce the what I call the plastification of our ocean mm. and so I'm the, I'm the coastline runner and someone uh, about two years ago said Luke you're not the coastline runner you're just a plogger <laughs> and I thought I thought hey, hey. <laughs> hang on um, and so I asked what that was and plogging yeah. is it's a mixture is from Sweden it's a mixture of t two words of plocker upper picking up litter and jogging mm. plogging and so plogging is running and picking stuff up mm. well it's athletic altruism then isn't it in many oh, yeah. ways yeah, good. Um, and so tell us what the world plogging championships will involve then in each year and what you have to do uh, in order to i suppose win and mm -hmm. take part and, and where do they pick and all these things that sure interested in. um to qualify for the world plogging championships you have to collect a certain amount of waste litter and across a year um in the last two uh, two months, okay. June, July, I think it is, and log it with them. The amount of litter and the distance you run and the elevation. They're very keen on elevation, which is being able to run up hills. Mm. And so I qualified for it by running the canals in London and running up big hills like Primrose Hill. Mm. So I got the elevation up Primrose Hill and the amount of waste to pick up on the canals is devastating mm. <laughs> it's very difficult um, and running b big um, distances um, and that's to, to qualify for it and to to win it mm. you just have to do more of that you have <laughs> to run even higher even further and collect more more waste and last year when I I myself was the sole representative again from Great Britain I was team GB in one um, I actually did very well but I, di I was disqualified because I, I went out of the area, I got lost in downtown Genoa in, <laughs> in Italy so I got disqualified so I'm not going to get disqualified this year and I'm going to try and win it. Well we are going to wish you every best of luck and we will keep in touch and you can send us some videos of you on your way oh, hopefully uh, yeah. so. But you mentioned Italy, this one's also in Italy again at Gandino. Yeah dual-pronged question why how do they pick these spaces and and you know Italy you've had some bad luck there so you know <laughs> hopefully you can reverse that voodoo sure um, they the world plugging championships um, originated from a, a group of um, very environmental Italians mm. um, Roberto Cavallo um, originated it and that combined with they were both environmentalists and runners trail runners so near where it started in Genoa they have big <coughs> um, hill mountain ranges and 
the timing of it, they decided to do the first World Plugging Championships at the end of the tourist season mm. when most waste would have to be collected. Oh, and so for me, it's my first time competing in the World Plugging Championships in Gandino and Bergamo. Um, but I think the same, um, same criteria has mm. fit. It's the end of the tourist season. Yeah. There's most just chuck litter that's got to be cleaned up by someone. Mm. So um, the point is to have a competition that al already is I I environmentally friendly. Um, uh, and so to qualify, you've got to have cleaned up a certain amount. And then to win it, you've got to clean up even more. Is it a sense of you all start on the same start line? And you can finish in first, but if you don't have enough rubbish on you, you won't win. You could come tenth, but have the most, and then that sort of you get points based uh, marking on that sort um, of thing. Correct. Yeah. Um, first of all, you have to clear two checkpoints, and you have to um, do it within three hours. Was last year, but also the the waste collected is quite important. I don't know if you're familiar with the acronym of CO2E, mm. stands for carbon dioxide equivalent, and it's a way of calculating everything's impact um, in, in, on our environment. Mm. And so, for example, a, <clears throat> a, uh, I've, brought, I've brought some rubbish brought along some for you. Props. Don't worry, it's <laughs> But this I just collected on the way here. Yeah. And to, I think it will il illustrate it best, is this um, uh, creates about um, 100 grams of CO2E. Mm. Um, and it's pet plastic. And so you can collect that. But if you collect this yeah. aluminum can, uh, that is about four times as much. This is about uh, 200 grams of CO2E. And so the waste you collect, uh, you have to be quite clever about the waste you collect. I see. So if you spend your whole time not running but picking up fag butts, mm you're not going to win, mm. even though they're very environment, environmentally damaging and have huge longevity. Um, but this will last for hundreds of years, this will last for thousands of years, so maybe this is the thing to collect. And this, uh, aluminum can, um, I'm, <coughs> I'm, 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 while training for this and qualifying for it and running, I'm amazed by the amount of this that we see in London because this is valuable, mm. valuable stuff. And why the, uh, why the canals and rivers trust and councils don't have um, uh, schemes where there is value in picking this up and returning it, is, it just amazes me. Because this, this is, unlike this mm. polymer plastic, you can recycle this polymer plastic, you can recycle it about seven or eight times before the uh, structure of it uh, is problematic. Okay. Uh, this al aluminum can is infinitely recyclable. So this actually is much more uh, environmentally friendly to produce and sell and make money from than this. Luke with James there, the World Plogging Championships in Gandino in northern Italy from the 27th to the 29th of September. Well, stay with us as we'll be hearing more from Luke with a special call to arms for you at home as he looks to create the first ever Team GB of ploggers. We'll also have a reminder of a few key headlines after the break, so don't go anywhere. Now, we return to Luke, the coastline runner. Before the break, we heard all about the World Plogging Championships he's taking part in next month, the sporting event that looks to spread an important environmental message about cutting down on waste and defeating plastic pollutions. Well, we pick top of the conversation where Luke has a message to you at home about how you can help me create a special team of Londoners to join him on the world stage later in the year amount that you picked up the fact you got these on the way here you're a Londoner yourself mm -hmm. this kind of thing would be perfect in London uh, it's the tourist season all round um, there is an infinite amount of waste in our canals as well and mm -hmm. elsewhere after the world blogging championship in November you've you've got an idea to create we've had the Olympics uh, they're just running for themselves they're not picking up anything <laughs> Alex you should be ashamed of himself for that gold medal um, <laughs> 
you are trying to put together a Team GB of bloggers uh, from a few months' time. Yes, that's right, um, James. Um, in November, I've been tasked to assemble the Team GB for the National Team Championships of the World Plugging Championships, and <coughs> excuse me, and that and that team championships will be in Genoa again. Mm. And I'm assembling a team, and I'd love it to have your help mm. in um, your viewers. If there's anyone interested in plugging this absurious sport mm. of absurd and serious sport of collecting stuff, if in September. Before I go for the individual mm. championships, in September I will be organising a, uh, a, a plogging run for, on a canal and up a hill in London, and that way we'll decide if someone would like to join us for being part of the Team GB for the World Plogging Championships in November. And they would have to take three or four days, two days off work, Mm. And then we'd, we'd travel to Italy and we'll try and win that too. Well, I'm sure there are definitely going to be people interested in that and we'll get the message out as well on our socials. I can't let you go without getting that one of your feet up on the table to see those shoes. They are fascinating. Would I call them shoes or would I just call them footwear? Um, um, they are... There, there you go. Have we got that? Can you see that? What are they? They, they are barefoot running shoes and, and barefoot junkie, which are actually just here on Old Street. Um, they sell these Vibram shoes, and this the most minimal shoe I could find. <laughs> um, and I, I, I run in these, and these are actually the Aqua version um, because they're even slighter. And they, because I'm I'm the coastline runner, I usually run the exact shoreline of, of a beach. And so I wanted things to dry quickly and to have minimal waste. So these are the most minimal shoe that I can find. If anyone knows anything more minimal, then please tell me. <laughs> well, socks, I'd say. <laughs> well, ah, oh, interesting point. I will be trying out a, a pair of very durable socks <laughs> to run in. So. Luke, it's been such a pleasure. I could go all day. I might get in one more question. Uh, we've had such a good time talking about how interesting this is. But there is a really serious point behind why you are such a keen environmentalist. Um, tell us a little bit about how much it does concern you nowadays. And things are starting to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of activists, a lot of young activists as well. Are you optimistic um, as we head into the next few decades about the way things are going, particularly in, in London and, and the way things are talked about? Mm -hmm. um, yes, James, I, I am optimistic, but I'm worried that we haven't got enough time to be optimistic. I'm worried that we need action now. And um, I mean, the facts are, the facts uh, of this are, is, is, is people like the World Bank say that we humans will produce about 2.4 billion tonnes of, of waste this year. Mm. And within the generation, that is going to close to double now, this is a very, very big problem because none of this is valuable to any other species on Earth. And this lasts for hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of years. And uh, this is a, 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 a very big problem. So the data is very worrying, but people are beginning to move in the right direction. However, uh, this brand um, did sponsor the Olympics. And so they're claiming big sustainability. But... Every minute, so we've been talking now for five minutes or so, every minute, every minute in the world, one million plastic water bottles gets bought. Mm. And we've got to switch on and do something about that, as well as putting it in the bin, yeah. <laughs> um, which is what I, I'm doing. But I think we've got to, so we've got to stop the tap mm. of waste. Uh, sorry, not stop. We, sorry, we have to reduce the, the tap of waste uh, as well as clean it up better. So we've got we've got to start uh, reducing the one million bottles a minute, mm. one million a minute, and this is very worrying. So I'm so I'm 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 very worried. I wish everyone would just 
I suppose my general message is, apart from the micro message of plogging and put, packing it, just packing it in, put it in the bin, mm. is my general message to everyone is just just consider our environment. That's all I really ask. Just whatever decision it is, whether I leave this on your table or whether I put it in the bin, just consider our environment and put it in the bin is better than just leaving it stuff. Just stop chucking things. Yeah. There you go. Well, do get in contact with us across our social media platforms if you want to know more from Luke about how you can join him on his plogging journey.